up welcome or welcome back i'm val and for today's video i'm going to be giving you some tips on how to make sure that you get the most out of the gym that you're safe and that you're not making any embarrassing mistakes at the gym because it's good it happens to all of us you start off as a beginner we all start off somewhere and sometimes you just don't know these things so i'm going to save you the trouble and give you some tips on how to make sure you have a good gym experience tip number one is make sure you have the proper height for your squat rack this is for safety but also on how to lift a little more comfortably if you're having to come up on your tippy toes when coming off the rack, then it's hard to be stable. You can't really use your core. If you have a lot of weight on there, you might not even be able to get it off to begin with. So when you go to the gym, I know certain gyms have different styles of squat racks, but you want to go in there and figure out the right height for you, even if it takes you a couple times to figure out. You want something that sits comfortably on your shoulders or lower back, depending on how you squat. And you want something where your knees are slightly bent. You don't want to have to like squat it out of the rack either. You don't want it too high or too low, but you don't want to be on your tippy toes. This is not only important for when you're taking the bar off of the rack, but also for when you're putting it back on. It's a lot easier to miss the rack if it's too high for you rather than if it's too low for you. Especially if you don't have a spotter or someone there with you, it can be hard to get the bar on top of the rack and then you're kind of stuck there, it becomes unsafe, you can possibly lose control of the bar, and a lot of bad things can happen from that. So make sure you're setting up the rack to a comfortable height for you. Second gym mistake you should avoid is trying to lose weight too fast. I know we have a lot of big goals, I know some of those include weight loss, and I can tell you from experience myself, losing weight fast is not healthy or sustainable. If you're doing hours of cardio, if you're starving yourself, if you're eating little to no calories that is not good for you and it is not sustainable if you're not lifting properly and you're just trying to lose a ton of weight and only doing cardio not really focusing on gaining strength or doing proper form or even doing exercise you enjoy just for the purpose of losing weight then it's not going to be a good experience if you're trying to lose weight you want to make sure that you're eating the right amount of foods the right amount of calories proteins carbs and fats you want to make sure that you have cardio in your routine, but not too much, not too little. And you want to make sure you have a good lifting plan. The next gym tip I'm going to give you is ask for help if you need it. Don't be afraid to ask for a spot. If you ever see me in the gym, I'll give you a spot anytime. But really, safety comes first. So you don't ever want to be in a situation where you're stuck under the bar on a deadlift or stuck at the bottom of a squat and you have to like bail out and possibly even hurt yourself. You know, if you hurt yourself, then you're just backtracking. You know, an injury will set you back a ton. So it's better if you just look for someone around the gym, ask someone who looks friendly for a spot. Most of the time, you'll get a yes. My next mistake to avoid is loading the bar unevenly. Now, this has definitely happened to me a couple of times, and that's why I always double, triple check when I'm lifting weights. As you'll sometimes load the bar unevenly, whether it be by five pounds or by like 30 pounds. You always want to double check the weight you're lifting so that you don't get hurt accidentally or you don't lose control of the bar like crazy in case you have a lot more weight on one side than other. The next mistake you want to avoid is resting for too long or not enough. Now I know the intensity is high, it feels good to sweat, there's a place and a time for supersets, but if you really want to focus on strength for example and you're doing squats, you want to make sure you get a good amount of rest so that way you're not too tired for your next set and you're underperforming. On all of my strength lifts like squat bench and deadlift or like cleans, all of my main compound lifts, I like to rest for a minimum of two minutes for like a maximum of five minutes if it's a max out day. So I wanna make sure that I'm resting enough to where I feel good, I've caught my breath, so that way I'm ready to go back into the lift like if it's my first lift I'm doing that day. Once I move on to my accessories, I wanna make sure I'm not resting too much. Now I know it can be easy to get distracted on your phone or talking to friends or you have that friendly gym goer who comes and says hi to you and then tells you their whole life story and then it's been 10 minutes and then you've rested way too much. So what I like to do is I either like to time myself or look at the clock at the gym, make sure I'm only resting for about a max of two minutes, anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute, depending on the day. The next one I see really often is lifting with bad form or too heavy. Now it's not your fault if you don't know proper form. That goes back to asking for help I'm always here for help, my comments, my Instagram, in person if you know me in person. But lifting with proper form is so important for your safety and for your success in the gym. If you want to get the most out of the lift, you have to make sure you're doing it properly. Now if you want to lift properly and for a long time, you want to avoid injury. 
So never be afraid of asking for help, but also don't ego lift. Don't go too heavy if you know you can't do it. I see a lot of people quarter squatting, and yes, it's impressive that you can put three plates on the bar, but it's not impressive if you're not hitting depth. At the end of the day, it doesn't benefit you in any way, shape, or form to be lifting too heavy with bad form. The next one, I'm super guilty. It's not stretching at all or not stretching at the proper time. So not stretching at all is very common. Like I said, I myself, week after week, have to remind myself to stretch more because I, my muscles get really tight. So you wanna make sure you're stretching. I like to make it separate from my workout. I just like to make sure I warm up before I stretch. So that's when stretching at the improper time comes in. You never wanna do static stretching where you're holding a stretch before your workout. If your muscles aren't warm, you can possibly pull something. So I either like to save it for the end of my workout or a complete separate day. If I'm stretching on a complete separate day, I still warm up. You wanna like jog in place, do some jumping jacks, you know, do a couple squats. Do some movements so that your muscles are warm and then you won't hurt yourself when you're doing static stretching. Before my workout, I like to do dynamic movements. So I'm doing any movement that I'm gonna do as a workout that day. If I'm doing squats, I'll do a couple air squats, walking lunges, kicks. If you guys wanna see my full warm up and cool down routine, comment down below and I'll be sure to include that on my YouTube channel. The next one is a mistake I see a lot in beginners. It's holding your breath during your workout. So I know you wanna keep that tight feeling when you're working out. I know weights can be heavy or you might be nervous while working out and you want to hold your breath but proper breathing has a lot to do with proper form and executing your exercises properly you want to make sure you're breathing out on like the pushing movement where you're exerting in a workout so where you're using the force in your workout is usually where you want to breathe out during a squat for example i'll breathe in at the top of the squat squat once i hit depth and i'm on my way back up that's where i'll let go of a breath and i'll do that for every single rep Although there are some exercises where I'll want to hold on to my breath for bench, for example, but most of the time you're going to want to make sure you're keeping a steady breathing flow. The next tip goes hand in hand with breathing correctly. It's bracing correctly. I know this can be a hard thing to learn and muscle and mind connection comes with time and practice, but you want to make sure you're using your abs properly. I never understood it when people meant that you should be using your abs the entire time you're working out until I learned how to brace. So bracing is when you use your abs and you breathe into them and you hold your core tight so that way your entire body is stable. This is important so that you can lift heavier, so you can lift safely, and so you can strengthen your core. You can tell you're not bracing correctly most of the time when you're using your lower back and you're arching. Next time, make sure that your hips are directly underneath you and that you're squeezing your abs like if you were to be doing an ab exercise. My last tip is something that I see really, 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 really often as a personal trainer. It's something that I noticed right away when we're doing leg days is putting the pressure on your toes instead of your heels. So a lot of people can't feel their glutes in workouts. They can't feel their hamstrings. Most people are quad dominant and most people even have knee pain during leg day. This is because they're putting too much pressure on their toes and not enough down their heels. So how I like to get rid of this bad habit of going onto your toes instead of your heels is by slowing movements down. On squats, for example, if you do a box squat, it's easier for you to sit down, reset, stay on your heels, and then push through them coming on your way back up. You always wanna do these things with no weight so that way you can really focus on your form. If you're really struggling with pushing through your heels, you can put small like two and a half pound weights on your toes and it'll force you to have your toes up, put all the pressure in your heels, and then in turn, you'll feel your hamstrings and your glutes more. Another exercise to use to get rid of this bad habit is step-ups. I love using step-ups as a way to make sure you're forcing all of your weight into your heel, up your leg, using your hamstrings and your glutes, and even your quads. Just because you're pushing through your heel doesn't mean you won't be using your quads. But step-ups is a great way to practice this. Take it slow, really focus on the contraction, Imagine what your muscles are supposed to be doing, and it'll be a hundred times easier for you to feel your exercise where you're supposed to feel it. All right guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video on mistakes to avoid, some tips on how to make sure you're having a good gym experience. Be sure to comment down below what other videos you wanna see from me. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos, and follow me on Instagram. Bye.